He says here um, in verse 10, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings. Why? Because if we suffer with him in that sense, if we enter in his, the fellowship of his sufferings, then we shall also be glorified and reign with him. Right? Now, entering into his sufferings don't mean you suffer what he suffered. I want to be, this is the main reason I want to bring this up. The fellowship of his sufferings mean that we understood, understand what he went through, and we count that as for us, right? Because he bore it for us. He did not suffer for him. And you're not going to suffer for him in the sense that you're going to take on what he suffered, and somehow that's, that's causing you now his sufferings to be filled up in that sense. See, that's a misunderstanding of the Scripture, the way we enter into his sufferings is we say, I see what he went through. I see the stripes he bore. I see the crown of thorns on his head. I see the way he was mistreated and abused and all these kind of things. And he did that for me. So I enter into that and I say, those were for me. So that's my sufferings that he went through. And now you enter into his sufferings. And when you enter into his sufferings, now you also enter into his resurrection life. And so you don't have to bear the things that he bore for you. Don't, see, that's, man, the devil had a heyday with that in the, all the way through history for the most part. You don't need to suffer what he bore. He bore it so you don't have to suffer it, right? So don't try to get spiritual and start trying to, well, this is my cross, you know, this is my thorn, you know, trying to be like Paul. Uh, I don't have time to go into it, but you ain't Paul. You ain't Job, right? You don't have Timothy's stomach, okay? All this stuff that we look at, right? He says, that I may know in the power of his resurrection the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Now, this is Paul. And he said, if I might attain to that. So there was a, he was still pressing. He was still pushing. He says that right here. Not as though I have already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended in Christ Jesus. He said, I'm going for the thing that Jesus died to give me. That's what he's saying. If I can apprehend what I was apprehended for, he said, I want to know, I want to understand, and I want to, I want to understand what he went through because if I can understand what he went through for me, then I can apprehend what all he did for me and I can take part in that. But see, a lot of people just, you know, they just brush that aside and they don't think what he actually went through. And whenever you're going through things, you need to stop and go, wait a minute, is this something he went through for me? Why am I suffering this? If he bore it, I shouldn't suffer it. I shouldn't have to put up with it. And then you realize that he bore it so that you could be free. So you need the freedom for which you were apprehended. And that freedom is freedom from sin. It is freedom from sickness and disease. You're supposed to live this life free of those things so that you can live this life, the resurrection life of Christ, even before the consummation of everything. Why? Because of our faith in him. Faith now lives like it will then. That's the essence of faith. See, you getting healed, you don't get healed by faith, and that faith is a thing of, well, I'm just, I'm just using my faith to get healed. No, no, no. Your faith is in the fact that Jesus bore all this, and you are going at it to a time and place where that will not be a part of it. So faith now is you living in that now that's going to be in the future. Is this making sense? So faith looks at tomorrow like it was yesterday. 